Today on Fishing with the Dodger, we're taking our first trip of the season into the mountains. Dodger and crew are on the Upper Bow River in Kananaskis. Come on, fishies, I know you're in there. Meanwhile, Dodger Jr. gives us all his best casting tips. However, on the coast, with salmon, this can burn holes in your hand pretty well, literally. <laughs> and the Dodger reveals how our Fly Girl of the Week has truly captured his heart. Sable, hurry! Hurry, 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 hurry! Are you ready? Let's go. Are you ready? Let's go. Kananaskis Park is an area known amongst native Albertans for centuries. Less than an hour's drive from Calgary, it hosts the most of Alberta scenery. Amazing hiking trails, stunning mountain ranges, and rustic visions of alpine meadows. It's a multiple use area where agriculture, mining, and gas and oil extraction exist alongside a diversity of recreational activities. Once thought of as strictly an industrial region, providing the province and Banff parks with cash resources and park personnel accommodations, Canmore and Kananaskis has become a commercial hot commodity. It's sought after worldwide by individuals wanting access to residential housing amidst the pristine mountain setting. The Dodger shows us some of the amazing beauty of Kananaskis while fishing for brown trout and whitefish. April is still early spring for Alberta. The Upper Bow River in Kananaskis Park hasn't experienced the full rush of mountain snow runoff. For those itching to get fishing, this is the time to be on the bow because the runoff waters will soon be too heavy. Greg Nemitz is in town for his first visit to Alberta. He hooked up with the Dodger years ago when they both realized Greg's company, BeefJerky.com, and Rock Dodger Outfitters had a common marketing niche. I got an email out of the blue from him asking me if I wanted to be his sponsor. So I looked at his website and looked at what he was doing. And it, it looked like something that, yeah, I bet fishermen eat a lot of beef jerky. So, okay, let's give this a try. Well, that was years ago. Although in all that time, neither had ever met in person. When Greg told the Dodger he was traveling from Carson City for a visit, a fishing trip was soon in the works. So I called up the Dodger and said, hey, I'm coming up to visit. And he says, okay, I'll take you fishing. <laughs> Don Riley and Mike Lindsay from Alpine Anglers are guiding the boats today. And Dave Devlin, an experienced fly fisher, is along for the ride. There's over a hundred years of collective fly fishing experience riding the waters today. So Greg is in excellent hands. Oh yeah, this is a trouty water, guys. It doesn't get any better than this. Soon, Dodger gets a hit. Oh, but it turns out to be the infamous Bow River Boulder fish. Yeah, Mike, that felt just too solid. It was like, wham! We get into some rougher waters where trout are likely to hide. Look at the water. I can't believe how clear it is. This is incredible. <coughs> Five bucks if you can take Mike's hat off, eh? Dawn rows us into a prime spot. Right on the edge. The creatures of the edges. Oh man, look at this water, Dave. It almost seems as though the upper bow fish are teasing the Dodger. But will he have a chance to get back at him? Well, we'll check on that later. But as you may have noticed, the Bow River is a high volume, fast flowing body of water. When wading and walking, it's important to know how to stand your ground without going on a slip and slide adventure. While fishing with my buddy Neil Wilkinson, the chair of the Capital Health Authority, we saw a perfect fishing spot on the Upper Bow River. The river looks shallow, but both Neil and I know it can hold some deadly surprises. One of the things that you know, you and I, who fish all the time, take uh, take for granted, is how to safely cross a stream. Right? Everybody figures it's easy. It doesn't look deep. Our goal is to get over to that island because I want to fish the the seam there, right on the V. We walk in on the angle, 
and we walk out on an angle. If you lose your footing and you feel you're, you're gonna go downstream, drop to your knees, never put your feet out in front of you. Because the first thing that'll happen, other than that bee attacking me, the first thing that happens is your feet can get lodged underneath a sweeper or underneath a rock, and then before you know it, you flipped over. Okay. It is. You, you can, can perish that way. You could perish that way. What Not with the Dodger, though. No, 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 that with you. But just if somebody's alone, foolishly, and yeah. gets trapped, they should have a cameraman with them, though, so that that could be recorded for posterity for the family <laughs> and for the insurance company. And for the insurance company, yeah. exactly. And we made it. Hooray! Hey, congratulations. Good. Up next on Fishing with the Dodger, will Sable the dog use her daddy Dodger's advice in crossing a river? Good girl, come on. She hits a hole and she freezes, eh? Stay tuned. We're back on the upper bow in Kananaskis, fishing with the Dodger. It's early spring and there are still patches of snow, but it's a beautiful day and a float trip in the mountains is just the thing to cure the winter blues. The scenery in Kananaskis is breathtaking, and it's working out to be a gorgeous day. Plus, there's fish in those waters, and we have four fly fishing experts angling for a trout bounty. Greg Nemitz is our special guest, having traveled all the way from Carson City, Nevada. He's never been to Alberta before and has never fly fished. Oh, it's just fabulous. It's really beautiful. The Rocky Mountains, uh, I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, here we are in the middle of April. It's a beautiful day. About, uh, I don't know, 60 degrees maybe? Well, yeah, maybe 50 degrees. <laughs> but anyways, it's really nice. I like it. Greg is also a sponsor for the show, providing the Dodger and crew with snacking supplies. I get, I get the phone call from Greg, lives in Nevada, right? And then he says, I'm coming north, and I have a care package for you. There's a care package for you, actually. So I now have this monster box jerky in the back of the truck. Right? Now I just have to hide it from Connor when I get home. Well, he may try to hide it from his son, Connor, but Sable the dog is on to him. Oh, yeah. I got myself a trout spotting jerky eating dog, babe. Maybe the Dodger needs to tie some of that jerky on the end of a line because the world-famous upper bow trout have so far dodged the Dodger. But the day is still young. Yeah, I just got another bite, guys. Yeah, did I ever get another bite? I was really starting to frustrate me. Yeah, he took me again. And they're biting them off. They're not untying it. Of course, it's hard for fish to untie things because they have fins, not hands. <laughs> yeah. But on a serious note, the Dodger is using braided line, and that stuff doesn't break off. Sable, my little Sable, we've got something big down there chasing your old man. Bit that one off again. There's another one. Right on the edge of the drop off, just hammered me. Unbelievable. Come on, fishies, I know you're in there. Come on, Sable, give us the, give us the wiggle. Well, we're not certain if that wiggle will entice the upper bow trout, but we do know doggy Sable has something that melts the heart of all she meets. This week, our fly girl is none other than our fly fishing sweetheart, Sable the dog. Sable is almost as big as she's going to get, but she still has some puppy in her. A Weimaraner, she has energy and drive to spare. Sometimes referred to as silver ghosts, these dogs are known to be wonderful companions. Come on, let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. Sable, you look rather svelte in that big orange jacket. The Dodger is full of compliments for Sable, and the affection is clearly mutual. But Sable still has to develop a love of water. Daddy Dodger tries to coax her through. Good girl. Okay, we'll go up here. Come on, bud. Oh, I know. Come on. Come on. As everybody wades in, Sable has a real dilemma. I'm not sure she's going to come or stay in. She's sort of freaking out with the water. Sable, come. Come on, buddy. Good girl, come on. 
She hits a hole and she freezes, eh? Aw, Sable, come stand by the camera operator. She'll keep you safe. Maybe she has some beef jerky for you. Yum, yum. But it looks like her concern for Daddy Dodger wins the day. Come on, buddy. Sable, hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> That's hilarious, Sable. She's talking. Dodger isn't the only concerned parent. A pair of Canadian geese have a nest nearby, and Sable has found it. But for the moment, our fly girl is just so glad to have her dad Dodger back. Come on, buddy. Come on. Let's go back to the boat, OK? She says, but dad, I'm a bird dog. And that big goose is around here somewhere. Come on, bud. Come on, Sable. Let's go back to the boat. Come on, buddy. Yeah, we'll go back to the boat. And so it turns out that everything is safe and sound. All the geese eggs are intact, and Dodger and Doggy are a cozy pair again on the boat, amongst a good supply of beef jerky. Okay, one more little piece. There you go. Oh, you're a good girl. Coming up, we find out about the ancient legend of Mount Yamnuska. And Dodger Jr. shows us how to cast a perfect fly. Welcome back to Fishing with the Dodger. We're on the upper Bow River in Kananaskis today. It's early spring in April. The leaves haven't bloomed on the trees yet, but that only enhances the haunting scenery of the mountains. The Dodger and crew have stopped for some walk and wade fishing amongst river islands. Our fishing guides check the waters for bugs and larvae. It's a good way to determine the trout food supply. So far, it looks like a hearty brunch buffet at Troutland. The timing of the hatches will be different based on water temperature and seasons, etc. But uh, the basic bugs are pretty consistent up and down the Rockies. We stole you, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. There's more where that came from. Oh, yeah. Dawn gives us a little history of the area. Yonder mountain here, if you kind of look, once you get down a little lower, the angle's better. The, the outline on the top it actually is the, is the face of a native person. And the Indians used to believe uh, when they came up here that that, uh, that protected them from their enemies. So they always felt safe in this uh, basically outflow of the, of the Bow Valley here. Even where it gets to, so they would always encamp around the base of Yamnuska. That's Mount Yamnuska. Right? Yeah. So they, that was one of their, their key you know, fall hunting and fishing locations. The area is still a key hunting and fishing location, but a little known fact is that the presence of brown trout, the dominant upper bow fish, was a man-made accident. About 60 years ago, the Banff National Parks and the Alberta provincial government often traded stocks of fish back and forth, replenishing lakes and rivers in both areas. The truck broke down uh, just about halfway between Banff and Canmore, uh, near uh, Carrot Creek, which is one of the small tributary streams. The truck driver, uh, in his infinite wisdom, decided that uh, if he left his truck abandoned, broken down, uh, the fish would die. The, the truck wasn't aerated. So he took it upon himself to uh, uh, dump his load of brown fingerlings into Carrot Creek, which got into the Bow River. And that is the one and only time that the, this upper river has been stocked with anything like that. Well, hopefully we're going to see a nice close-up and personal view of one of the infamous offspring soon. But speaking of infamous offspring, here's this week's segment of Connor's Corner. Connor Gallinus, a.k.a. Dodger Jr., has been fly fishing for six years. Quite the accomplishment for an 11-year-old. He now teaches other kids at casting clinics his techniques. The first objective to remember is fly fishing is all about making a fish think you have a tasty fly on the end of your line. A lot of people think that fly fishing is fishing for flies, which I don't get that, but... Dodger Jr. has some basic tips for casting your first fly. Get some of your line out. You can just do this by shaking the tip and then put your index finger right here so that your line doesn't just roll out. You just have tension here so that when you're reeling up, you don't have a whole ton of loose line on your reel and it doesn't get jammed up. 
Okay, right now we have the magical imaginary fish on the end of the line, which is really about probably a hundred times what you could probably have for a fish, but okay. <laughs> so if the imaginary fish started to run, I can let off without having to pull off of here, which can sometimes apply too much weight to the fish, like letting it let go. Right now I have the trigger on, so the imaginary fish can't get away. But the imaginary fish, if it starts running, instead of applying my drag, I can place my hand here, slowing it down. However, on the coast with salmon, this can burn holes in your hand pretty well, literally. <laughs> yes, Dodger fish gets him again. You want your rod tip high so that you can keep tension on the fish and your line. And then once you have tension here or once you have stuff here you just you don't have to put your put that into your finger but then that way it just goes onto your reel cleaner and then now I have them on the reel so I don't have to strip. The only thing you can't do is you can't club the dodger okay? <laughs> oh. we, we, we catch and release all fish including the old man. Well, the old man Dodger had to suit up for a night on the town. In this case, a night at the Ampia Awards in Edmonton. Just as the Academy Awards are known as the Oscars, these are known as the Rosies in Canada. We asked some of the folks attending if they had ever been fly fishing. I have never in my, well, no, I've been fly fishing once, but I wasn't allowed to use a hook, only a piece of red yarn. See, what this was is so I could learn how to cast without injuring anybody, especially fish who would not normally eat yarn. Fly fishing? No. No. But I see people do it, and it uh, looks really romantic. I'm a typical native. I've been fishing since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Well, actually, I have a phobia of fish. It's called ichthyophobia, And, um, yeah, pictures of fish, fish, live fish. I can eat fish as long as it doesn't look like fish. So what do you think could make her get over her fear of fish? Brad Pitt? If he invited me out fishing, I think I could do it. I think I could even bait my own hook if he handed me a little minnow and said, Kim, slap this baby on. Hey, you know, if Brad Pitt said it, I would dance around dressed as an Ewok. But that's another episode. Coming up next, the Dodger lands a monster. Maybe. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Fishing with the Dodger. On this episode, we're up in beautiful Kananaskis country in Alberta, Canada. It's where the mountains meet the foothills. And even though it's still early spring, the weather is fine. What a day to go fishing. The weather is warm, the air is still crisp, and the water is crystal clear. What more could a fisher ask for? Well, actually, fishing murkier water on an overcast day usually results in a better haul. Trout are especially wary in these waters, where predators range from bears to osprey. When the water is clear and the day is sunny, trout hide and won't even feed. Nevertheless, this is such a great day to spend a spring day, it doesn't seem like anybody minds. You got one of those Rocky Mountain uh, boulder fish. Oh, it's, probably, it's probably one of the big stump fish. It looks good though. Fight him, Dave. Fight him. That's a monster. Listen to it. That's a monster. Oh, but hang on a second, folks. I think we really do have something on the line. We got a monster. He thought he was a whale. Sable, look. Big fish. Or not. Felt the slam. So what happened? This is actually, we can explain this. This is a good thing to explain. What the whitey did was he obviously was chasing that uh, back fly, yeah. took a strike at it because I felt the tug, and then uh, got himself wrapped up in that front fly. Poor river monster, but you know what? He will grow up one day. Was that a whitey? A little, yeah. little whitey, yeah. Little yeah. Little river bonefish. Yeah. Little river bonefish. Yeah. There you go. Bye bye, buddy. Okay. Well, even so, the skunk is off. The skunk is off. So we don't have to worry about the skunk. One for the Dodger and zero for Dave. Is that nobody's keeping score? You guys got to. No, we don't keep score. What do you think about that, Dave? I think the score is about to change. 
The gauntlet is down. Dave pulls out his arsenal. So that's your small box right there? Well, this is the small one. <laughs> we stop for some walk and wade fishing and we leave Sable to guard the boat. Okay, maybe Sable is still a little scared of the water and feels safer in the boat. But hey, it's all about puppy steps, right? Hey, it looks like Dave may be evening the score. Ah, uh, no, it's a tree trout. Say, what about our novice fisher, Greg Nemitz? Well, he's shooting for good pitchers right now, but he seems to be having a great time. We enjoy a spot of lunch and bask in the glory of the scenery. Soon we're back on the water, enjoying the most beautiful part of the day. We accidentally interrupt a migrating flock of trumpeter swans. Just beautiful. Well, we're almost at the end of our day, but we have a treasure trove of fishing water to ride before we're done. We're coming up to some oxygenated waters. Dodger, get ready. I'm on it. I'll be there shortly. Up. But it's just so breathtaking out here. I mean, you can't not enjoy it. Hey, I had a great time. It's uh, just a wonderful place up here. First time on the Bow River, supposed to be one of the best places to fish in the world. Well, we'll see you next time. You bet, Greg. It's early in the year and we're so thrilled we had enough thaw to get a boat in the river. Folks, this area will be teeming with fish after the spring runoff, and we'll be back. Well, be sure that you're back for the Bow Girls show next week. We take some novice female fly fishers and turn them into outstanding anglers. And we learn what kind of fish are in a river by reading the bugs in the water. Plus, how many fish are in the Bow River? Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Fishing with the Dodger.